What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Brian's Journey. Today we leave the monastery and make our way towards wherever the heck we're going. Uh, I might as well go with level 2 wind cutter. That'll hit everything, so that's all cool and stuff. Uh, let's, yeah, let's go with level 2 again. Beginning of the game, you have to be a little bit more considerate about your... Uh, MP and such than you maybe normally would be. Uh, I'm fine with kind of front-loading my mana usage a little bit, though. Uh, I'm trying to think. The one guy uses fire on the bottom. I thought the other one used wind, but I guess not. Doesn't matter, because they're both dead now. Is there nothing in here? Hmm. I'm pretty sure there's a spirit around this house in the 64 version of the game. Oh well. Oh, hellhounds. Uh, he's in melee range, so let's hit him a bit. Get some of our MP back. He is not in melee range. Let's just go with Wind Cutter level 1. I don't think Wind Cutter level 2 actually increases the damage you do. Um, maybe it does. Increases the number of projectiles, so perhaps uh, if multiple are hitting the same person. Hmm. I should have walked forward before casting the first wind cutter. Now, one of the things that is interesting about uh, Brian's journey is that it uh, really does a lot to. Like. Okay, let me start over again. In Quest 64, the way that you fight battles is pretty much the same throughout the entire game. Like, it really doesn't change all that much. Whereas, in Brian's Journey, it actually changes a lot throughout the game. Like, I can tell you with confidence that my current strategy of spamming Wind Cutter... You're not gonna let me rest or anything? Okay. A spamming Wind Cutter is not something that is going to continue to work long term. Well, it might work, but that's not going to be my strategy, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, let's do this. Okay. Uh, I want to... Try and regenerate my MP a little bit against these guys, because they're going to use Rock, which uh, only shoots forward. Oh, every enemy in this game actually has a melee attack as well. So that's something to consider. And that's good for now. Let's just go back to a level 1 wind cutter. Uh, dodging attacks is an, a pretty prominent element in this game. Or not as prominent as Quest 64, but it's still something that is a part of the battle system. But it's less about uh, your movements uh, while the attack is animating, and more about positioning yourself uh, carefully. In Quest 64, a lot of attacks you could dodge just by, I don't know, like walking in a certain pattern. Like Wind Cutter, you could uh, dodge by like walking in a big circle. Uh, and uh, the rock attacks, you could dodge by just running right up to the enemy. Uh, whereas in this game, it's more about being in the right place before your turn ends. And like I said, uh, every enemy has a melee attack, so you can't often completely negate damage, although magic attacks are almost always stronger than melee. Hellhounds are dangerous. Now one aspect of the way that I'm playing is that I don't have healing, and I'm not going for healing. So I have to be pretty careful about how I uh, ration out my MP and my HP. But thankfully we have made it to Dondoran. Don't think there's really anything in any of the houses here, so let us start by what the heck is this place? Oh, this is the bakery. But they only give you fresh bread if you do not have any. And I do have some. So that's not any use to me. I'm not sure why this guy is yellow. So he gives me yellow wings, which allows me to return to Dondoran at any time. Where's the inn? I could really use the inn. 
Ah, well, here's the spirit I was looking for. Not quite up to level 3 wind cutter. I believe I need about 15 spirits for that, I want to say. I could be very wrong about that, however. MP is doing decently well. Increasing your MP is actually a lot more important in this game, I found. Or not important, but like... Because it's, it's very important in Quest 64 as well, but in Quest 64... I don't know, it's... Uh, the, the whole dichotomy is just very different, because... You can rely a lot more on... Uh, just in increasing your MP, like, solely, and not worrying too much about your health. I guess, uh, because you can do a lot of healing and uh, magic barrier and stuff will completely remove uh, a lot of the damage that you'll take. Whereas in this game you have to be a little bit more worried about keeping your stats somewhat balanced. And uh, you're, go you're gonna find that you use probably more spells and a wider variety of spells in this game. Also, uh, part of it that I, I was trying to get at earlier is just the fact that you do not regenerate MP while walking in this game. You regenerate MP every time you attack, like in the first game. But you also regenerate uh, MP any time you pass a turn. So if you're just walking towards an enemy or something, then you also gain MP from that. So uh, we're just exploring Dondoran Castle here. The reason being, I... I'm looking for a spirit, and I cannot exactly recall where it is, but I've pretty much exhausted all the other areas. So, let's see what we got here. Nothing in here. Might as well talk to some of these guys. The, what? Okay, you, were, you didn't tell me anything interesting. Here's the spirit I was looking for. Our wind spirit count is actually rising quite rapidly. And up here, we actually meet the princess of Dondoran, which is not something that happens in the... Well, no. The way it happens in this game is different. So in uh, Brian's journey, the princess is portrayed as a lot more of like a go-getter and like a tomboy kind of thing. So I, I guess we've been caught peeping on the princess or something. Why am I... Who are you people? Ham and Dorley? Are these supposed to be like the prospective matches for the princess? So yeah, they make this whole, uh, this kind of scene, which is kind of interesting, where, like, you're, like, you meet the princess and she's all, oh, we gotta stop the bandits. And then you meet the king. Whereas before, I think she, the princess is, like, lamenting the bandits in her room. But she doesn't really have anything to do in the story, she's just kind of there. Which is interesting. Uh, hello? Who's Felzen? Did they really give the guard a name? Hmm. Alright then. So that's a thing that happened. So, wind cutter level two. It's not that that hits all of them. These guys are pretty beefy. I really should have been moving closer to the enemy consistently there. That's something that's pretty important in this game, just because a lot of times uh, you want to 
try and get a couple hits in with your staff every battle just to regenerate a little bit of MP because that's pretty much the only way to do it in this game and also increase your health. How do you know that? The Ailtale Book, that's what it's called. I was trying to remember what it was called. I'm surprised we didn't even hear about its name until after meeting the king. It's kind of strange. So that was all very interesting. Although, truth be told, the ending is a little anticlimactic, but it's interesting that it happened. So let me return to the princess's room here, because we want to loot her goods. Lots of stuff. And items, we're definitely going to be wanting to use items in this game, especially early on. Uh, because, as I mentioned in the last episode, our inventory is limited. So, what, we've got... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 8 items in our inventory already, so it's almost half full. And we haven't even, like, done anything yet. So that's unfortunate. We're definitely going to want to be using those up. And because we don't have healing yet, uh, we're going to need to, the fresh bread to get through the next area. And just because of the way MP regeneration works in this game, we're definitely going to be wanting to use the dew drops because, well, MP regeneration is kind of weird in this game. It doesn't work. A, it's not as effective as in Quest 64. Which is actually a good thing in the long run, I think. It really encourages you to uh, diversify the way that you play the game and focus a little bit more on your long-term, like your longevity while you're going through a dungeon. Whereas in Quest 64, you can pretty much just burn everything you have and then just not run away from every battle for a while if you need to. That's not something you can really do in this game. I mean, I guess you could, but it would be a lot more complicated. Uh, so, might as well save. Let us make our way towards the Connor Forest. Now normally, uh, I would be kind of concerned about wanting to like grind a little bit at this point, uh, in Quest 64 anyways, because the whole process of going through the Connor Forest is pretty... it can be very challenging in Quest 64 if you don't know what you're doing especially. But I'm not worried about that. Uh, there isn't really any point in this game where you have to actually grind. Uh, which is obviously a plus. I mean, if there isn't really a way to do things wrong, I guess I would say. Is this the Connor? Okay, that's the Connor Forest down there. There's an area back here that I came across that I want to check out. Uh, is that going to hit the far guy? Yeah. Okay punch you up a little bit. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna end up doing is getting some wind spirits. It's actually... Okay, I've got wind cutter level 3 now, so I think I'm actually gonna stop increasing my wind spirits at this point. Oh, okay. This is, There's nothing here. I thought there was something there. I just saw, like, an opening in the clearing when I was coming to Dondoran. I just assumed there was something there, but I was clearly mistaken. So, uh, those man-eaters, um, they're fairly weak enemies, and so I decided to try and spend a little bit of time punching them with my staff. Apparently that's what I do, is punch guys with my staff. Just because, in general, when you do come across weak enemies, that's a good time to get a little bit of staff action in. Uh, just because it's the safest time to do it, uh, and it's a good way to get a little bit of experience if you need to. Or, uh, well, you always need to. You can never have too much health, but... Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, now that I have Wind Cutter level 3, I'm going to be dumping uh, spirits into water for a little bit. Uh, because I do want to unlock the healing spell. That is my next priority, even though I don't believe that water is the next element that I want to actually power after wind. So, I got a little beaten up from that excursion there. 
but uh, it was not for nothing. I got a little bit extra HP, which 2 HP isn't going to make a huge difference, but it counts for something. Uh, so, next time around, we are actually going to head over to the Connor Forest and check that out. So, uh, with that said, I will catch you on the next episode of Let's Play Brian's Journey. Catch you later!